Nós ainda vínhamos as duas fazer peste elétrica. Hello everyone, Teresa here coming to update you on the Miro Basin project. This is a large scale restoration project that Mossy Earth has set out to start in the dry south of Portugal, in the Mediterranean biome, which is at great risk of desertification. And indeed, I, am, I have come today to the Miro River, which is the backbone of the Miro Basin. And um, I can see that the river is completely dry which is something uh, I wasn't expecting, to be honest, because it's late autumn and um, it hasn't been the worst year of rains that uh, we have witnessed in Portugal lately. And yeah, this is a Portuguese, a main Portuguese river that is just not flowing and it is very disturbing. Um, but so our project has everything to do with that and it is going to be a big project so it will be made up of several different projects that are more targeted to specific goals. One of those is the rewilding abandoned eucalyptus plantations. That is the first project that we have launched and I will tell you what have we been up to to start that project. But I am also going to introduce you our second uh, new project here which will be all about safeguarding the endemic freshwater fish species of the Mira Basin. Now, if you're not familiar with the Rewilding Abandoned Eucalyptus Plantations project yet, I really recommend you to read its project page or even watch the project discussion video or the last two vlogs from the Mira Basin, uh, where we have explained a bit more in depth the rationale behind this project. We will start the field work this winter of taking down eucalyptus trees. We are setting up a field team and we have decided to work with a small local com company called Pronativa who is specialized in low impact forestry. These guys have come to the land already to test out the arborism techniques that they want to use to help us take down the eucalyptus trees without them landing, for example, on a cork oak tree. Uh, so by using ropes, we can do a controlled uh, fall of the tree. And um, the reason why we did this test, uh, it's because it was important for us to estimate the time needed and the budget for this big operation, because uh, we need to manage wisely the investment from Mossy Earth members. And this is going to be a big operation, so that, and there is a lot of variables here so it was an attempt to yeah to have a, a more accurate estimate uh, also to realize some uh, details about the field work cost effectiveness plays an important part in this project because uh, a big goal of ours here is to make this project scalable and so for that it has to be economically viable and so we are also looking into some forest machines that we can use to make this work uh, more efficient because just with uh, manpower uh, there are some tasks that are really difficult or would take lots of time and even more budget so we are looking into forest machines uh, in a different way that let's say the forest industry industry does uh, in this case we want to maximize the low impact on the soil and the surrounding vegetation on biodiversity so we're looking for the smaller smallest machines uh, that we can find to do the work um, and also some other characteristics like having wheels that distribute uh, a lot more the weight uh, so the has more wheels the better um, yeah we are looking into forwarder machines in the first place because it's very impossible for us to transport the heavy logs of eucalyptus from their cutting place to the shipping place uh, so where they will be loaded onto a truck for for us to sell the wood and the revenue from this wood will help us cover the project expenses. So it's another way to make the project economically viable. Um, other things we were considering before horse logging to help us pull out the logs from more inaccessible areas of the forest. So whether the where the slope is very high or the vegetation is very dense and we don't want to go in with uh, we don't want to go close in with a for forwarder machine um, but horse logging seems to be very expensive 
uh, at the moment in Portugal and so now we are more looking into forest winches has a very um, yeah very good alternative solution for this particular uh, problem. Next we are also looking into wood chippers because we need to shred the leftover branches and foliage from the taken down eucalyptus trees uh, so that we don't leave them in the forest there as a fire hazard and instead we can leave them as a mulch cover to the soil which will be actually nice. So very soon we will come to you with the decisions that we have made. We'll introduce our nerdy machines and our field team too, I'm hoping. We were also really busy during the summer months uh, preparing a LIFE project application. The LIFE program is the biggest funding from the European Union towards nature conservation and we submitted a project about protecting and enhancing the ecological integrity of the Mira River. So it is a lot about ecological restoration of the riparian galleries along the river Mira. So for example here you can see how they are, this is not the worst case, sometimes there's no riparian gallery, but has, it has only one line of very sparse old trees and so it really needs a lot of restoration, these riparian galleries here, but also in the immediate um, hillsides we want to restore the native oaklands and that's something we are doing with the rewilding abandoned eucalyptus plantations and that we want to scale up. This project that we submitted to LIFE is also about mitigating the threats and uh, pressures that are on the Mira River. So for example, excessive water abstraction, wildfire prevention and invasive species. This was a lot of work, a lot of computer work and meetings with our consortium partners which were University of Évora and uh, the municipality of Admira and CTFC, a forest research center from Catalonia. So all I have to show you about that is these last moments after we submitted the, finally the application and we were really thrilled and relieved that we just accomplished this. So guys, how do you feel about finally filing up the life application. We are seven minutes, we are in the countdown. It's still seven minutes to the application, but we filed it up. We still can change things, we still can change things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, we feel like, I feel like uh, it was a learning experience and we grow a lot, um, especially it was a good exercise to kind of put together the whole program uh, into a concise and very complex application. Uh, we learned a lot, we, we made great relationships with partners and I think uh, we did an amazing job uh, and we are very, very tired and we just want to sleep now. I think that's... <laughs> exactly. Yes, I, I, I have a fewer words version of it, which is uh, sleep, but, but proud of, uh, of the documents that we put together. <laughs> And, and excited about actually learning all the, the things you've been writing about because the more we looked into it to, to, to write this, uh, this application, the more I was like, this all makes so much sense, like you really have to read it, you just have to look at it. So I found a bit of water now. It's a, a shallow but long pool of water and this is a good place to tell you about why are we doing a fish conservation project. So there are two endemic freshwater fish species in the Mira Basin that are critically endangered at the moment. They are really at risk of extinction and I think you can see why uh, from everything I've shown you so far and yet the rest of the river being dry and not flowing. Those species are the Mira Chub, Squalis turgalensis, and the southwestern archsmouth nace, Iberochondrastoma almacai. They are both small cyprinids that need running freshwater currents and feed mostly on macroinvertebrates. The sharp degradation of freshwater habitats due to water scarcity is really um, the major reason uh, for yeah, the threat of these uh, fish species, but uh, there's also other tolls on their survival, such as invasive species and actually here it's very quick to see that um, there's a lot of signs of life here but it's only invasive species so for example the asian mussel curbicula fulminea 
and also the Louisiana crawfish Procambarus um, clarkii we can find here. There's also some otter poop there. Uh, they, they, there has been a substitution in the otters feeding. Uh, they don't no longer can eat these, this is said, these freshwater fishes, which used to be the main uh, base for their feeding. Uh, but they have found a substitute in these invasive species of the um, yeah, Louisiana crawfish, for example. But these fishes are still here, they are still surviving and we really want to secure a future for them. So, so we are setting up the most complete project that we can think of uh, for safeguarding the, the species future. And this will be based on five main components and I am going to tell you about them as we are starting just the first one, which is getting a full assessment of the species uh, distribution, the state of their actual populations and also on their habitat. So monitoring is always part of most years projects but in this case is actually um, it's a first survey because there is we have been gathering all the information possible and available but there is not very recent data on the abundance and distribution of these fish species. So we will start with eDNA analysis, um, actually a multi-species eDNA analysis, not only of these two species, but also other native and invasive species. So we have a good picture of what is happening in the freshwater um, habitats of this hydrographic basin. This is something we are planning to do in the spring when the environmental conditions are a bit better for this kind of analysis but for now throughout the next months we will already be doing some habitat mapping and characterization and identification of the restoration potential of the streams and the river in the parts where these fish species uh, should be or uh, even most important for now at first where they are surviving already. I already went with Flora who you might have seen uh, talking about our partnership projects. Uh, she will also be working on the aquatic side of things of this Mira Basin project and we have been to the stream where uh, the last time these fish these fishes were surveyed where scientists uh, found uh, the most specimens and we have been to this very uh, sensitive important stream to do the, a bit of this habitat recognition and it happened pretty much what uh, is happening here today which is we were expecting to see uh, a bit more water already running and uh, for most of the stream bed it was completely dry we started to see some puddles of water which gave us a tiny bit of hope so we just found the biggest puddle so far. I um, don't know if you can see it very well. But yeah, mostly dry and um, yeah, nothing special so far. But by the end of the walk, we actually arrived to a 500 meter long pool and uh, a bit deep too. Um, that we we still have to come back and check out how it continues we still have to finish the um, uh, yeah the recognition of that stream uh, but for example that place uh, give us hope that we can come there and do the edna map uh, analysis and further down do a fish survey uh, with actually fishing techniques so that we can evaluate about the state of the population there and what does will make sense for us to do so monitoring and habitat restoration are two main components of this project. Another important bit will be an ex situ reproduction program. We know this has happened already in the past and in other years there has been the release of a few hundred individuals to um, increase the wild populations uh, since in very dry years they, they really diminish. And this is something that we want to secure for the future. Uh, we are looking into this, but this is also a big uh, part of the project. But this will still need some more time to be deployed. Next, we want to raise awareness. We want to make these fish species famous in the local community. 
uh, we'll do a public campaign but we will also go to schools and bring the kids to the river and streams to really see the fishes with their own eyes and we also want to talk with the fishing community. Finally but not least we need to do a program on controlling invasive species and this is really gonna become a whole project of its own which we will tell you uh, more about very soon because there are a lot of invasive species and uh, yeah, we need to do a very complete program on this. So these are some of the activities that you can look forward to see on this new fish conservation project. And I want to end with another bit of good news. We have finally gotten a long awaited license for us to collect seeds of uh, riparian tree species. This is an ash tree and uh, that's another uh, thing that I am doing here today by the Mirror River, which is collecting uh, seeds uh, of these uh, native uh, yeah, riparian tree species, such as the ash or alder. This news means that we can finally start our native plant nursery that will support all the restoration works that I've been telling you about uh, in this vlog. And um, if you are interested in plant nurseries, stay in tune uh, for the next vlog. I'll probably bring you more news on that. And yeah, thank you for everyone who is supporting our work.